Hey what's up guys it's Kelly, welcome back to my channel. Today I am talking about why I love Sarah J Maas and her books so much. So I knew that I wanted to do a bonus video this week that was somehow Sarah J Maas related because I uploaded my A Quarter Silver Flames review on Monday, I uploaded my reading vlog on Thursday and I thought it would just be fun to make it like a Sarah J Maas week and add in a little bonus video to celebrate. And I had a couple of ideas. I considered like ranking my favorite ships and ranking my favorite books, doing Akatar quizzes. Those are all things that I could for sure do in the future if you guys are keen. But in the end, I just decided to be really sappy <laughs> and be very honest with you and just talk about why I actually love her books so much. If you have watched this channel for like any small amount of time I'm sure you know how much I love Sarah J Maas even if you've only seen my videos in the last week. Her books mean a lot to me and today I'm gonna show why. So this video will be partly spoiler free. The first half I'm just gonna talk kind of generally about why I love her books so much and what they mean to me and then I will get into more specific things but I'll warn you before the spoilers come so no worries there. So as you all know, I really, really love Sarah J Maas and I really, really love her books. So I love her for like all the normal reasons I would normally love an author. I genuinely do really enjoy her writing style. I really enjoy her way of describing things. And I, I think that she's amazing at world building. She creates such incredible worlds that are just so, like so well developed that you just want to dive into them and you feel like you could dive into them. I, I also think that she's really good at plot. I mean, I heard that she was a pantser, which just doesn't make sense to me because one of the reasons that I love rereading her books is there is so much foreshadowing there, it's insane. So yeah, I love her for all of the like technical things. I, I just, I love the way that she writes and the way that she builds stories and the way that she builds worlds and I think that she strikes a very good balance between good interesting plot and really really well developed characters and very strong characters and for someone like me who is more drawn to character driven stories I love that because I love character driven stories but yes yeah, sometimes it can be like a little boring if nothing happens <laughs> however when I read her books I get that really amazing really intense connection with her characters but I also get to have some exciting plots, so it's just a good time to be had by everyone all around. And that's all great. And that's probably about 75% of the reason that most of the books by her I've given five stars. But I can get all that from other authors. You know, I, there, there are dozens of authors that I think are incredible writers and that I think build really great characters and that even can balance the really great characters with a really interesting plot. That other 25% is just how the books make me feel. All of her series, Throne of Glass, Akatar, Crescent City, they all mean so much to me and they all have impacted me so profoundly. That's just because of how much of herself she puts into these books. Something that struck me so deeply when reading all three of those series is her mental health representation. Most of her characters, and in particular the three main characters from each of those series, have all been through such unimaginable trauma. They've all had really terrible things happen to them in their lives and they're all suffering because of it. She addresses depression and anxiety and PTSD and although they aren't given those names in the books it's so clear that this is what so many of her characters are struggling with because it's not just the main characters I mean so many of the side characters are dealing with these things as well. Starting with when I read the Akatar series and then the Throne of Glass series I just had never felt so seen by a fantasy book. I mean I'd read and related to books like The Catcher in the Rye and The Perks of Being a Wallflower but those are books about mental health, those are books about feeling isolated and trying to find your place in the world. But these felt different because this wasn't a book where the main focus was mental health, this was a book where it was about 
magic and intrigue and excitement and danger and romance and these characters also happen to be dealing with all of these emotions on the side. These characters also happen to be dealing with incredible grief and emotion, emotionally abusive relationships and depression. And it just meant the world to me seeing characters dealing with these things in such a different setting than I'd ever experienced it. And I know Sarah J Maas is not the only author doing this, but it was the first time that I experienced it. And it's also been the most profoundly that I've experienced it. And I related to these characters that she was creating so much and I related to their mental health struggles so deeply. And I just felt seen and understood. And in a time where I was crawling out of a really dark place, I had these characters alongside me who were crawling out of equally dark places. And in a lot of ways, their journey was mirroring mine. And now just moving into the spoiler territory for both Throne of Glass and Akatar. If you've watched either of my Cortisol Flames videos, you'll know that I didn't like Nesta going into that series. I think part of the reason that I have always struggled with Nesta is that she just represents so many people in my life that have hurt me and that at some point or another just made my life in some way miserable and I don't think that was helped by the fact that I related to Feyre so so strongly and the journey that she went on in the story arc that she had just in so many ways mirrored many aspects of my life so I've never been in an emotionally abusive romantic relationship but I've definitely been in other very emotionally abusive relationships in my life. Feyre coming out of that, pulling herself out of that situation and then finding Reese to start with means so much to me because that's so much of what my relationship felt like. Alan and I started getting really close when I was in a very, very dark place and he was my rock to get through that time as he has been in the like seven years since. And we developed this very, very close friendship that eventually just naturally grew into love. So <laughs> reading about Feyre and Reese and reading about her being in this incredibly, incredibly dark place in her life. I've always just loved the way that their relationship develops where they did become friends and she did slowly allow herself to open up to him and they became each other's emotional support animals. <laughs> And that grew into love. And I, I just, I saw so many parallels between us and them and our relationship when it eventually blossomed into a relationship and their relationship. So, so that always hit me in the feels and that is why I'm still trash for face and I know a lot of people are sick of them. I, I will never get sick of reading about Reese and Feyre because they, as characters individually, but also as a couple mean the world to me. And then it extends beyond Reese to Feyre becoming part of the inner circle and that sense of found family the same way that Aelin found her court. The way that these people manage to surround themselves with like-minded people who all need some sort of healing, who all need each other in some way and all kind of fill some sort of space in each other's lives that is entirely out of choice and entirely out of love and not out of a sense of obligation was so impactful to me <laughs> because 
so many of my the relationships in my life up until that point had felt like obligations and friendship groups and things growing up that I was kind of there because they felt obligated to let me be there, that I was invited to things out of a sense of obligation. And seeing these people come together who just loved each other and wanted to spend time with each other because they loved each other and wanted to spend time with each other was beautiful to me. And again, mirrored very much what I was going through in my life at the time as I was finally finding people that I felt like I connected with and that felt like a family to me. And then leading on from all of that, that despite all of those things, despite the incredible romances and the incredible friendships, there was still the acknowledgement that these people weren't okay. Because I think where I had seen mental health represented in media before, it was like, oh, I'm really sad, I'm really depressed, I'm really lonely, I'm really anxious, whatever the case was, I have PTSD, but now I have a friend, or now I have a boyfriend, and suddenly everything's fine and dandy, and I'm not depressed anymore, and that's not how it works. <laughs> Depression is not just magically cured by being in a loving relationship, it's still a slog, and it's still hard work, and it's still something that you have to fight every day. Healing is a long process and I had never before seen that in the same way in a book because yes I was in a good place in my life. I had really great friends and I had an amazing boyfriend but I wasn't just fine, I wasn't just magically cured. I had amazing people who supported me and who helped me get through things and who helped me get better but they didn't just magically make me better and that's something I just found so much again in the Akatar series is like at the point where we're at now Feyre and Reese are so happy they have an amazing life they have a wonderful family they they make each other so much happier than either of them could ever have imagined but they still wake up with nightmares they still have these places of extreme darkness inside them they still have these feelings of inadequacy and that meant a lot to me i think i needed to see that it was okay to have everything in my life going really well and still not be okay because that's just not how mental health works and also that it's okay to need people it's okay to not be able to do things by yourself it's okay to not be able to you know help your shitty mental health by yourself it's okay to need people it's okay to let people show you that you are loved and you are worthy when you can't see those things yourself. Because another thing that I feel like kind of gets shoved down our throats is, well, you know, if you can't love yourself, how can you expect other people to love you? And like, it's bullshit. <laughs> it's, it's okay to need other people to show you that you're worthy and to show you that you are valid until you can believe those things by yourself. And it's okay to find your healing in other people. And those were all just messages that I needed really, really strongly at the time that I read these books. Another way that I've always felt very seen in her books is that so many of her characters, Feyre and Reese included, have very deep-rooted insecurities about themselves and have very deep-rooted self-loathing. And that's something that I've been dealing with for pretty much all of my life. And again, seeing that represented on page. And again, seeing friends and lovers helping to teach each other that they are worthy and that they are good people was something was a message that I just so desperately needed and 
I, as a general rule, have a sense of imposter syndrome and that I, I always feel like I'm not good enough and that still to this day leads me to really intense self-loathing because I was always made to feel like if I wasn't good at something then I wasn't worthwhile to the point where even at 24 I still if, if I can't master something I just want to give up on it and I think that largely ties into the fact that if I'm not good at something I hate myself for it and that's why I don't like doing things that I'm not good at and that's why it's difficult for me to put a lot of work into things and not get a lot out. So like in the Akatar series we have Feyre getting all of these amazing powers and not having any idea how to use them and starting to learn to control them and failing but picking herself up, building herself up again and continuing to try and I think that's one of the reasons that Era Fire is such an important book to me in the Throne of Glass series. I know a lot of people hate it. It is one of my favourite books in the series and I think it has so much to do with Aelin just hitting rock bottom, completely being broken down and then slowly building herself up and slowly learning to master her powers and to master herself and to figure out her identity and beating herself up for it when she fails, sure, but trying again and again until she's got it and until she's amazing at it and that was that was what I needed it was just to see that it was okay to fail and that I didn't have to hate myself if I wasn't good at something and that I could fail and I could give myself room to fail and that I could then pick myself up and try again that was a lot I feel I feel light I think talking this all out has been really good for me this has been like a verbal journal entry and I also just feel so like content and at peace in a way that only her books make me feel. I just genuinely love Sarah J Maas and her books so much and I'm so grateful to her for all of the healing that she helped bring me and that's why I will always love these books. The Akatar series is my comfort series. I've already reread it once, I'm currently rereading it again. I'm rereading it via audio now, but as soon as I can get physical copies of the books, I am going to reread it again because it means so much to me. So, thank you for listening to me babble about all of that. <laughs> Let me know in the comments either why you love Sarah J. Maas or if you don't, but for some reason still sat through this video, then let me know if who your comfort authors are, who your comfort books are, what your comfort books are, um, and just why they mean so much to you, if you feel comfortable sharing. In the description, you'll find links to all of my social media. That's my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, as well as my blog. You'll also find links to my Patreon, my coffee, my Redbubble, my online store, and my Blackpool's affiliate link, if you'd like to support me using any of those. But that's it for me today and I shall see you all again very soon. Bye. My life is grounded in a firm routine of coffee, sleep and work. I am not boring, I just stick to what I know.